Happy Holidays! Welcome to Volume 6, Episode 23 of American Folklore. It's so nice and warm in here tonight. <laughs> the fire is on, the yule log is burning. So stick around as we discuss the myth that is the Master Debater. What was the first uh, thing that inspired you to write about uh, the master debater? Uh, well, I, I think that um, first and foremost, it was just the extent to which uh, legends get exaggerated. I mean, there were people, uh, it was going around that this man was, was finished with his business before he even began, and I just, I just couldn't believe it. So I had to uh, investigate it. And Professor Johnson, what inspired you to write about the master debater? Uh, well, it's it's legends really that inspired me. I'm fascinated by legends, and um, the master debater is one that's been passed down for generations. It's about a a man who's so good at what he does that perhaps sometimes it's over even before it begins. Um, he's reputed to be a man who finishes what he starts and never leaves a job half done. Professor Johnson, I've read your book Inner Intensity: The Legend of the Master Debater. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, shed some light uh, for the viewers that haven't read your book what it's about? Yeah, well, I mean, if there were really only one point that I could touch upon uh, from this book, I would say that, that um, the real meat of the text is the master debater's quest to, to uh, know himself more intimately. And so, um, actually, at the climax of the book is when he really finds true in enlightenment and euphoria, and I think that, that that's but that's something that we that we express well in the book that we being the editor and I. So, Professor Johnson, uh, could you please explain uh, the process of writing this book? Yeah, well, um, it was it was my publisher that made it happen. They were giving me a lot of deadlines, and um, just the pressure was unbearable from all of these deadlines. And finally, one night, um, alone in my study, I had an explosion of ideas, and that that was when the book really started to take form. You scared me. Well, I hope you're enjoying Volume 6, Episode 23 of American Folklore and Myths Concerning the Master Debater. We'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Hi, hi it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois. It's like a towel. It's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat. The RV. ShamWow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? Doesn't trip. Doesn't make a mess. Bring it out. You wash it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. You can cut it in. Jack Billings, you are the master debater? I am the master debater, as you can easily tell from my grip. See, a good debater has a firm, strong handshake. He can pump a man's arms until there's almost no life left in that man. Ooh, ooh. Wow. I, I don't know how, how, do, how do you do it? it. Well, it takes great strength, it takes great stamina. There was this excellent book I read when I was younger called uh, Finer Points on Using Your Hands in Debating. Wow. And it, and I loved it. It told me everything I needed to know. Uh, see, you can't, just, you can't just use one hand when you're making a point or when you're trying to reach to the climax of a debate. Right, right. You, uh, you need to use both hands. Sometimes you need to alternate. Sometimes you just need to stop well, dead. You really need to know oh, how to... Oh, yes, exactly. And you, you need to vary it. See, if you're just doing the same motion over and over again... It gets, you know... It gets... For, it often brings you to the point too fast. You need to slow it down, you need to take a few breaths, uh, you need to put in some filler language. Nothing, nothing really that serious, wow. just take a calm breath and then go at it again. And that way you can keep going just all go, yeah. on for It's more hours. about endurance than, it's, than it's the actual... Endurance and it's stamina. Yeah. Yes, precisely. Well, that's amazing. 
So, so what are some things that the master debater does? I mean, do you, who, who do you master debate with? Well, uh, besides the professional master debating league, which, as you know, is uh, world famous, and uh, diplomats often go and try and request master debaters to handle certain conflicts. Yeah, I've, I've heard it. Actually, on CNN, there was, oh, there was oh, yes. a little story about that. Right. Uh, I, you must have been watching uh, the recent peace conferences over uh, Kosovo. Yes. Yes, yes. 26 nations had to send master debaters to that. Uh, I, w I represented the United States and uh, the NATO interests. It was, it was amazing. What we did is there was like there were 40 master debaters, and we all crowded into this one little room. And three days later of non-stop uh, master debating, we came out, and my God, we had no energy left. We were limp. We were drained. You know, I'm I'm sure it drains you because oh, just after oh, you just yes. pump it out like that and make start making your points, you know, just yes, yes, like my, oh my my face was flushed. Uh, there was just sweat running down my cheeks. My God, my my tie was all was in a way. It was oh, it was horrible. Now you said that there were forty other master debaters at this UN conference, but from what I've heard, there's only one master debater. Um, you are. Correct. Am I wrong? Or? I I am the master debater. There are other debaters of lesser skill, whose uh, entire lives revolve around debating, whose entire careers uh, revolve around debating. All they try and do all day is debate. However, I am the master debater. No one can match me when it comes to energy, strength, stamina, whatever. Wow. That, that's something, you know? Like, like what, what are some perks of master debating? Because you, you make it sound like it's just all fun and games. Oh, and no, like, no, no, uh, no. What are some pros and cons to it? I mean, Granted, I, I'm lightheaded and euphoric when I, uh, when I finish, but it's serious work, it's very strenuous, it's physically exhausting. It leaves you limp, it leaves you drained. Uh, I come out of a debate and th there's nothing left. Mm. Like, mm. I, I have to rest a little bit. I couldn't just go from one master to debate to another. Right. You need that time to relax and just gain, gain oh, whatever. Right. You, you know, the Rehydrate. energy. Right, exactly. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Billings, thank you so much for yes. for uh, for interviewing with us, and it really was it was a, a wonderful pleasure and, and whatnot. So. And advice for any young debaters out there: what you need to know is that you need to start early, start young, and do it often. All right, and get together with your friends. A, it doesn't have to be anything formal or serious. You can just all go into a room one evening and come out the next morning. Those are the wise words of Jack Billings. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Hi, thank you for staying with us through uh, Volume 6, Episode 23 of American Folklore and Myths about the Master Debater. This broadcast has been supported from viewers like you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Take care. Happy holidays. The way is hard, the end is happy. That's a really great... <laughs>